Hey friends, this video will give you the three primary steps research has shown are necessary to change our habits. Studies by top research universities show that this is true not only for us as individuals, but it's also true for organizations who undergo significant cultural norm or behavioral habit changes. You might remember an earlier video on my blog where I gave you the steps that you might take or ought to take when you want to create a new habit, a brand new habit. Well, this video will give you the steps we need to take in order to stop and replace a bad habit we already have but want to eliminate. So it's not a new habit, it's replacing a bad habit, an old habit. We have to do this by replacing the old habit with a new habit. The three steps we'll discuss in this video come from brain science research at, among other places, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, one of the top universities in the world. You might remember in the previous video, I shared with you, or in a previ previous video I should say, I shared with you the story of how I quit smoking in a single moment when I was about 21 years old. And it was honestly one of the easiest and stickiest decisions I've ever made. I've never once had even the slightest urge for a cigarette since that moment. And looking back, I imagine that what I did do was to use this three-step process I'm about to share with you. Although, when you watch that earlier video, you'll see that I didn't consciously take those three steps I'm about to share. Although I did unconsciously take the three steps. You and I both want much more from our lives, right? It's the human experience. We all always want more. Well, this obviously requires that we get more from ourselves, which in turn requires we change many of our current habits in addition to creating other new habits. But first, do you recall what Aristotle famously said about excellence? Aristotle said that we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence that is not an act, but a habit. Well, you want to be an excellent person and live an excellent life, right? You want to have excellent impact in the world. And if this is true, and it is, who we habitually are and what we habitually do defines us and defines our lives. It's not our occasionalness, our occasional beingness, or occasional actions that define us or our lives. Like Aristotle alluded to, it's our habitual being and doingness that defines us and our lives. Habits form because our brains are constantly seeking to save energy, to be more efficient, and to be more effective. As such, you and I go through the same routines in the same order almost every day of our adult lives. We sleep on the same side of the bed. We wake, typically, around the same time. We floss, we brush, we shave, we wash our face, our body, our hair with the same hands, in the same manner, in the same order, for the same much same amount of time, pretty much each and every day of our lives, right? The habits I mentioned are physical activities we undertake every day of our lives, pretty much. But we also have subconscious mental and emotional habits, don't we? So what do you habitually think about? Science tells us we have over 60,000 discrete thoughts each and every day, and that over 90% of them are the same from day to day to day. We have habitual beliefs and perceptions. What do you choose to habitually believe and perceive? How about your subconscious emotional attitude or mindset habits? What is your habitual attitude? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it highly motivated? How positive, how negative, how motivated? These habits define your life. They are, in fact, what you actually experience as your life. Your beliefs and attitude also determine what you do, how often you do what you do, and how well you do what you do. Everything you do. Everything. So wouldn't you agree that this matters an awful lot? Duke University research in 2006 found that more than 40%, 40 of the actions people perform each and every day aren't actual decisions but are habits. 
be willing to bet for a lot of us, it's more than 40% each day. For many people, probably much more. But even if it's only 40%, 40% of your life, don't you want to be sure you're living your biggest, best, most rewarding and promising life possible? Of course you do. MIT discovered that our habits incorporate a three-step loop. First, there's a cue or a trigger that tells our brain to go into automatic or habit mode. Next is our actual habit or routine itself. Our habits can be physical, mental, or emotional. And the third and final step is the reward that we get for engaging in the habit. Again, subconscious brain reward. The reward, of course, tells our brains if this particular loop is worth remembering and repeating in the future. Habits form because of some level of craving in our brains for our perceived reward. This is important because to eliminate a habit, we need to replace the unwanted habit with a new habit. So if excellence then is a habit, and it is, and if we want to be excellent people achieving excellent results with our potential in our lives, how then do we gain greater control over this thing called habit that dominates 40% or more of our daily lives? To understand and change our habits, you need to identify components of your loops. So step one, what you want to do is identify the routine you, routine you want to change, the habit. You want to understand what habit you want to change. This is probably obvious and easy, like smoking or eating poorly or overeating. But in some cases, it behooves us to spend time analyzing ourselves because not all self-limiting and self-destructive habits, mental, emotional, or activity, are obvious. For example, if you want to lose weight or otherwise optimize your health, but you tend to snack during the day unconsciously as a, out of habit, well then you've identified a habit or routine that you want to change and you'll be well served in changing. But perhaps you have a belief or a mindset or a, an emotional habit that's limiting you that you're not consciously aware of yet. These habits can be difficult to identify, so I encourage you Keep a journal of your habitual thoughts, your habitual feelings, states, and reactions each day for three to five days. Doing this will help you identify beliefs, mindsets, emotional states, and other habits that aren't serving you and might, in fact, be very seriously limiting you. Then you can use the following three-step process to change your habitual perception or your habitual belief mindset, your attitude, your emotional mental state, your habitual thinking and perceiving, and choose a new empowered, positive, and productive one to replace it with. All right, step two, experiment with rewards for your craving. Brain studies show that habits typically satiate some sort of craving we have in our brain. Now, the craving doesn't have to be such an obvious, intensive craving that we tend to, I think, associate with cravings, like an alcoholic's a craving for drugs or, or for alcohol, or a, an addict's craving for drugs or shopping or sex, whatever they're addicted to. So to replace or eliminate our habit, we have to identify what craving actually drives our behavior. And to do this, Again, don't assume what may seem to be obvious. Actually experiment with different potential rewards. And this can take days or weeks, but you're worth it. To conquer your habit, invest the time to correctly identify the reward your brain is seeking. Don't necessarily assume you understand your reward. For example, if your bad habit is daily snacking, don't necessarily assume the reward is the reward of a stomach that no longer feels hunger pangs, no longer feels that aching for food. So experiment with alternative rewards to be sure you've identified what you're actually craving. For example, your snacking might actually be a way of disrupting midday boredom you experience typically during the day. Or it might be a mechanism to avoid uh, built up stress or escape the stress, I should say or it might be a way to escape unpleasant, boring, or routine work. You may want to take a break and walk around down the hall or speak with people as a way of getting away from that boredom, but you've come to associate it with getting up to have a snack rather than associate, associate it with getting up to go for a walk or to speak with people. 
So start experimenting with new ways of satiating your craving, new habits. So instead of getting up and eating a snack, get up and go for a walk outside, or get up and go for a walk within the building, or get up and go speak with someone, or get up and talk to a friend on the phone, whatever it is. Get up and maybe meditate, stand and or sit somewhere and meditate, or eat, but eat celery, or something else that's very low in carbs, sugar, and is healthy. Finding the best reward, the healthiest reward, will allow you to satiate that craving, yet do so in a more healthy, holistic, or po otherwise positive way. Step three is to isolate your cue. Identify the specific cue that triggers your habit, your behavior. What exactly is triggering it? Now experiments show that almost all habit cues fit into one of five categories. First one is location, where you happen to be, what's around you, time. Third one is emotional state. The fourth one is other people. And the fifth one is an immediately preceding action, something that you've done immediately before the habit. Identifying your cue should be fairly easy, but again, don't necessarily assume the obvious. For example, your snacking might not actually be triggered again by hunger pangs. Perhaps there's a subconscious subconscious habit of building physical or mental stress through your morning or afternoon and once it reaches a certain threshold it's triggered your habit is triggered the cue is triggered it might be a biological clock thing or it could be a uh, an environmental thing maybe certain people come around you or it could be an emotional state thing that happens around the same time of day Please like and share this video, subscribe here on my YouTube channel and also at my website ChristopherBabson.com that way you don't miss any of the free training I post. I wish you peace, personal power and prosperity friends.